Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa staghfiruka lima al'alamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bad ahabati fillah I wanted to talk about something very important that you find that many of the people often forget and that is using the miswak and the miswak is from the asal of the miswak is from a type of oud a type of uh, stick or a root a root from the arawak tree a special tree however uh, any type of stick and you'll find in, in different countries uh, in different countries in Africa in different countries in Asia that they have their own forms of miswak that they use from the their local trees and branches and this also ta'ala receives the same reward or reward for it and likewise as some of the ulama mentioned that also of course using the toothbrush you know keeping the hygiene this is the one of the reasons behind it and the hikmah is to keep the mouth fresh and clean however it is probably most important as many of the ulama mention uh, as far as just plain and simple to follow the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Anawi entitled a chapter called Bab Fadl al-Siwaq wa Khisal al-Fitra. He said uh, the chapter of the benefit or the greatness of the miswak and the natural uh, characteristics, meaning that which is to be, that which is in accordance with your fitra, your natural state. And so we're going to just quickly read several hadith and just bring out some of the fawaid and that'll be sufficient for us, just to know the importance and the benefit of using the miswak. On Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qaad, lo la an ushukka ala ummiti o ala nas li amartuhum bi siwak in the first hadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira, he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, If it wasn't that I feared for my nation or on the people, I would have commanded them to use the miswak with every prayer. And this is agreed upon in Bukhari and Muslim. <coughs> And the next hadith, one Hudayfata radiallahu ta'ala anhu, قال, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا قام من الليل يشوسو فاعه بسواق متفق عليه. In this hadith, the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to, if he got up in the night, in the night prayer, or in the night in general, that he would brush his teeth uh, with his uh, his miswak, or brush his, his mouth, clean his mouth with his miswak. And this is also in Bukhari and Muslim. In the first hadith, I just wanted to mention uh, that the Prophet ﷺ said, Lola and shukka ala ummiti. If it weren't that I were uh, afraid, afraid of what? Afraid of it becoming an obligation that Allah would reveal some ayat and making it a... Uh, uh, a command for us to follow. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I would have commanded them with the suwak. So it shows us that using the miswak is mustahab. It's recommend, highly recommended. Sunnah Mu'akid, the Prophet ﷺ did it, and we have several hadith right here to show us. And uh, we're going to get to a few more, and then we're going to talk about the had hadith in general. When Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كنا نعد لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سواكه سواكه وطهوره فيبعثه الله ما شاء أن يبعثه من الليل فيس فيتسوك فيتسوك ويتوضأ ويصلي رواه مسلم. Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها said that we used to uh, prepare for the Prophet ﷺ his miswak and his water 
for purification in, in the night. And Allah would basically bless him and raise him so that he would be able to uh, get up to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, meaning to pray in, in to the length that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for him and get up in the amount of times and however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for him to get up. And he would get up for the night prayer. And he would, then he would use the miswak and he would make wudu and he would pray. And this is Wahu Muslim. So it shows that the Prophet would get up and use the miswak first, clean his mouth, and then make wudu and then pray. Because obviously you can't do the you can't pray without wudu. So it shows that there's a type of tartib and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. When Anas when Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aktartu alaykum fi sawak ruwahu Bukhari. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had uh, used the miswak the miswak very often or that he he, he used it and uh, and wanted his ummah to use it often and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best وَعَنْ شُرَيْهِ ibn Hani قَالَ كُلْتُ لِعَيْشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهَا بِأَيِّ شَيْءِ كَانَ يَبْدَأُ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ إِذَا دَخَلَ بَيْتُهُ قَالَتْ بِسِوَاكْ رُوَاهُ مُسْلَمْ this hadith, the hadith of Shuraih uh, bin Hani radiallahu ta'ala an, he said that he said to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, which thing did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam begin with when he entered his house? Because this is something that Aisha and the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum and hunna ajma'een, that they would know best. So he asked Aisha, because he wanted to know the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, what did the Prophet ﷺ begin with when he entered his house? And what did she say? قالت بسواك. He would begin with the miswak. So it shows that the Prophet ﷺ would wake up in the night with the mis using the miswak. And during the day, in entering his house, he would begin with the miswak. Showing that the miswak is very important in sunnah mu'akkida. When Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, دخلت على نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم وطرف السواق لسانه وهو يقول أو أو وسواق فيه فيه كأنه يتهوع. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the hadith of Abi Musa al Ashari رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said that I entered upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the edge of his miswak was on his tongue, meaning he was brushing his tongue. Uh, and in this, that's all the left that Imam Nawawi mentioned in this hadith, and I increased the other from another from a narration, and you'll find it, of course, in Bukhari and Muslim. You also find it in uh, Umdat Hakam, or Umdat uh, Umdat Hakam. Now, and so the Prophet ﷺ had the miswak on the edge of his tongue, وَتَرْفِ لِسَانِهِ وَهُوَ يَقُولُ وَسِوَاقُ فِي فِيهِ كَأَنَّهُ يَتَهَوَّعُ so the Prophet ﷺ had the miswak on the edge of his tongue until it was almost like he was choking. You know, so the, the sound that was mentioned in the hadith, وَهُوَ يَقُولُ and, and he uttered, he uttered, ur, ur, and that's the sound as a description in Arabic that it was almost that he was choking. You know, when you, when you take something and you go and it goes beyond your, your tongue or to the back of your throat, it's almost like you are choking. So the Prophet ﷺ used to use the miswak so much on his teeth and his mouth in general and his 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 tongue that it was almost like he choked. فَكَانَ يَقُولُ وَهُوَ يَقُولُ أُرْ وَسِوَاكُ فِي فِيهِ كَأَنَّهُ يَتَحَوَّعُ As if he was choking, you know, and, and, you know, the, the, and that's that sound. What do we gain from these ahadith? From these hadith, these hadith show us the benefit of the miswak and the various times that the Prophet ﷺ used them. So when he first got up in the morning, in the in the night, in Qiyam al-Layl, <coughs> before Qiyam al-Layl or Tahajid, 
uh, also in, uh, you know, when he entered his house. And those are the recommended times in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these hadith also show how he used it. That he used it on his tongue, he used it in his mouth in general, and he used it uh, for brushing his teeth, of course. Uh, also, these hadith, they show, uh, show to encourage to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and use the miswak for every uh, when when a person is making wudu, so in, in the one hadith it mentioned, uh, and and it just depends if it is tarti if it's mentioning the order or not that he used the miswak. Uh, it seems that he he appeared he used it before uh, making wudu. So the point is is when you're making wudu or after you make wudu, use the miswak and salat and at the time of salat making prayer. So when it's time to pray or right in between the Iqama and the Adhan, or what have you. Those are times to use the Miswak to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and get the Ajr. And as far as the illa, as far as the, the reason of keeping the mouth uh, clean. Also, which is not mentioned here, but also showing, uh, although some ulama dislike using the Miswak during fasting, they actually mention not to, to use it. But however, the general evidence shows that, and, and I don't know of any evidence to support that, <clears throat> but the general evidence shows us to use the miswak. As the Prophet said, Kulli Lola na shuka and ala umiti li amartum bisawak in the Kulli Salat. That every Salat, you know, that, that you can use the miswak anytime. So, that uh, also using the miswak um, in general just to keep the mouth clean and we mentioned the wudu, we mentioned before salat but also while fasting and this also helps to keep you know uh, the people around you and just keep your mouth a little bit more moist and a little bit uh, and we know that the the smell of the breath of the person fasting is like misk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this smell. However, the creation around you may not find it as appealing, obviously. And so the miswak in general, and it's not that you're removing that which appeals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you also don't want to harm the people who are around you and make it difficult, especially during the prayer, because everyone varies in their hygiene. Some people don't brush like other people. And some people are not as clean as other people. And then when they're fasting too, this only increases the smell. So using the miswak is a type of hygiene and cleanliness that is also important, is the, the reasoning behind it. And, and of course, just following the sunnah in general. Also, uh, using it during Qiyam and Layl, and also when entering one's house. And this is also uh, Sunnah Mu'akkidah, you know, and it was a definite Sunnah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not leave, that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Also, this hadith shows us the completeness and the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Tahara, in purification and being clean and having a clean mouth, that this was important. So it's a very important for us to be concerned about our dental hygiene and brushing our teeth with the miswak and brushing our teeth with our toothbrush, which has become a world custom now, pretty much. Uh, there's nothing wrong with brushing your teeth and you know using uh, toothpaste because some people go to the other extreme and they say, I'm following the sunnah, and they don't want to use toothpaste and uh, a toothbrush, which is in general for just using proper dental hygiene which will keep your mouth because of the toothpaste and so forth will help keep your mouth fresh and also uh, has other health properties when you use uh, those things in addition to the miswak. So this doesn't take away from the sunnah. Just like some people they go to another, I don't want to use the word extreme, but they use and they become very rigid about uh, using soap, for example. The Prophet didn't use soap. 
However, that does not negate using soap and cleaning your body and, and making yourself smell good because just using water and this, they didn't really have soap in the time of the Prophet so they had their own means of, 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 of the hygiene. So there's nothing wrong with using soap and these things which get rid of bacteria which help help clean your body and help you smell good this does not negate anything from the sharia so this is this can be a type of extremism when people negate that and say oh it's not from the sunnah i'm not gonna wash myself or it's not from the sunnah i'm not gonna brush my teeth i'm only gonna use a miswak if you only have a miswak okay but what is good using the toothbrush for dental hygiene using the miswak for dental hygiene and most importantly to follow the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also from this hadith it shows us the path of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in using the miswak and how he did and that he did it on his teeth and some of the ulama mentioned specifically how he did it on his teeth and you don't want to be hard on your teeth, hard on your enamel. So it's not about just rapidly, and a lot of us, when we uh, were using the miswak and early, and, and even a lot of people who've been using it a long time in their lives, they're very hard on their teeth. But rather, you should brush your teeth with a toothbrush and with a miswak in a gentle fashion. In a gentle fashion, uh, we don't have anything specifically that I know of that talks about the exact specifics of how the prophet did he use it very hard because that of course is going to damage your enamel and it can hurt harm your gums so you, you want to be gentle and use in the miswak gentle and have a soft name miswak as the prophet وسلم, also like his uh, miswak moist and this is uh, and one of the evidences for that is the hadith uh, <coughs> of Aisha anha where the Prophet ﷺ was on his deathbed. So that also shows us how important the miswak is. The Prophet ﷺ wanted that and he was on his he was in his death sickness. And I've forgotten the exact hadith, how the hadith goes, but what it means general, he was on his deathbed, and then he ishara bi yadihi, that he pointed with his hand, and she they knew, I think it was uh, uh, one of the other Sahaba, maybe Abdurrah uh I can't recall who was in the room, and the Prophet ﷺ pointed, and he knew that it was a miswak, and the Prophet ﷺ used his, uh, I think it was his used miswak even, if I recall. And so he, Sallallahu Alaihi wanted the miswak to be moist. He So he pointed with his, his hand. So it shows us also using a moist miswak is what we gain from that, and there's various ways to... Uh, to benefit from those ahadith and those are just some of the uh, benefits from that those ahadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan